sustainability lens, a responsibility lens, suddenly these new areas actually come to come to bear. Now, if you look at um, what are the success factors, what companies really need, based on my experience, I've sort of coined it into three three things. One is I think they need to be very strong internal drivers, right? Uh, and that's essential. And it always starts, I feel, internally. Right? That has to be the, the strongest element in place. The other one is there have to be conducive external forces in place that allow companies uh, and encourage companies to do their business in a more responsible way. Right? And thirdly, very, very critical is the process factors. How do you go about doing it? How do you go about introducing it? And I think for many of us, doing CSR Malaysia for many, many years, we're all aware of what the internal driver should be, and to a large extent, even the external forces. But where we kind of get stuck is, how do you get there, right? And that's kind of what I've put as process factors. As internal, we're talking about internal drivers, uh, based on the experience that I've had, these are, I think, the most important, right? I mean, there are a whole lot of factors, but I feel these are the most important. I think, first and foremost, there has to be leadership by you. If I can just share an example, uh, you know, we've been trying to sort of push the whole responsibility agenda with the larger Teleno group for many, many years. And you know, while they did their share of philanthropy and community and all of that very well, when it came to things about things like supply chain management, they were a little bit hesitant. You know, they were like, why should we worry about what happens two or three down tiers down my supply chain? I'm not really responsible for that. My supplier should be bothered about that, not me. Until one day what happened was um, a Danish reporter walked into uh, Grameen Phone, which is uh, linked, which is part of the Telenor group. Grameen Phone is in Bangladesh, Telenor group is based in Scandinavia. And they walked, this reporter walked into Grameen Phone, one of Grameen Phone's sub, sub contractor. Uh, and just like the story earlier, they found a 14 year old boy uh, assembling some equipment right, in a factory. Now, if you're uh, in Dhaka, you probably wouldn't blink because it's completely acceptable in that culture. But what the Danish reporter then did is he actually flew back to Scandinavia and added on Scandinavian television. And as a result, the president of Talma Group almost lost his job. Investors, the government, everybody was sort of breathing down his neck saying what's happening, how can you let this happen, how can you not know what's in the supply chain. That, I think, was the wake-up call for him. And since then, the group has moved leaps and bounds on its responsibility agenda. And I don't know whether you always need a burning platform like that. You know, ideally, you don't. Ideally, there's no burning platform before you take that, that leap of, of faith into responsible management. But I think with a lot of cases, uh, that learning platform can help to trigger action. So leadership buy-in is extremely, extremely important. The other one is, of course, you know, once you have the buy-in of the leader, then it cascades down into your corporate culture, your values, and so on. And the third is, I think, this commitment to transparency and disclosure. And I think as Malaysian companies, none of us are very modest, you know. Uh, and we always think that, you know, if, if we do good, if we're doing something really well, we don't really need to talk about it because we're very modest about it. Uh, and I think this is where we need to realize that sometimes, um, and, and now especially, is a time when we need to put ourselves out there and disclose all the good that, work that's being done. And even if there's some work that's not being done, to actually say how we're addressing it, right? And I think in many instances, if you put it in the right context, uh, and if you're honest and genuine about it, hopefully stakeholders will, will understand if you bring them along this process. The external forces I won't go into in detail, but basically there needs to be a conducive legal and regulatory landscape, right? Um, an example, again, of a regulatory landscape. When I was at Fiji and we were putting together our climate change survey and we were preparing for carbon disclosure and so on, one of the things we found extremely difficult was convincing our management that we needed a proper system in place to capture our carbon data, right? Uh, and, and we realized that why, why it was so difficult to make that kind of investment was primarily because it wasn't really required in the country. I mean, it wasn't nice to have, you know? And this is why I think as the country prepares to reduce its carbon intensity by 40% and so on and so forth, it's extremely important for the government to also think about 
uh, carbon disclosure. And I, and I think they are. Recently, they've, they're doing a round of stakeholder engagement on national carbon disclosure, for example. So there needs to be those kinds of framework. Again, uh, in relation to, for example, green products, right? Certification of green products. Um, not enough awareness on certification of green products. Not enough uh, a push yeah, from vendors, sellers, retailers, and so on. So there needs to be an ecosystem that actually supports companies uh, in implementing more responsible management practices. Now, on the process factors, I think extremely important are these few factors. Firstly, it needs to be integrated. It cannot be a standalone initiative that is driven by the communications team or by a two-person CSR team or something. It cannot be. It has to be decentralized. It has to be integrated into the business. Uh, again, drawing from my past experience, you know, when I used to get asked by the media, what's your budget for CSR? And I used to say, actually, I don't have a budget. And they asked me, how do you do all these things? And I said, well, actually, the budget is owned by different people in the organization. Right? If you think about uh, reducing energy consumption, the budget for that was owned by the technology division, because that was where the biggest impact was. Uh, it was if it was something like employee engagement, then the budget rested with HR. So I had a minimal budget, but that budget was mainly to drive the different departments to go out and implement uh, the right thing within their business functions, right? So it needs to be a very integrated approach. Uh, employee engagement, critical, and then I'm sure you all understand why. Uh, and I, and this, the third point is very important, stakeholder engagement and involvement. These stakeholders need to be brought along the journey. And whenever I had to come up with uh, any kind of a CSR program or initiative, the first thing I always think about is, what does it mean to my different stakeholder groups? And how can I get them involved? How can I get them engaged? Customers, investors, employees, regulators, so on and so forth, NGOs even. Yeah? So it's extremely important because if we have to build stakeholder trust with these programs, then they need to be involved and they need to understand the relevance of the programs to their own interests and expectations. Then the last two is very much you know, pure management discipline. Uh, standards and benchmarks are extremely important. Uh, and we already heard about what the standards are previously. So those are things that I think guide us in how we in how we actually drive these management practices and put the whole agenda in place. And last but not least, I cannot emphasize the importance of having a performance management system. Sometimes we forget. We think that the only thing that needs performance management is stuff that is related to employees and finance. You know, and we don't realize that. The balance scorecard actually needs to extend beyond that. It needs to be quite broad. And it needs to integrate sustainability KPIs in there as well. A good example is Unilever. Unilever has got, I think their sustainability living plan has got three big goals. And those three big goals then cascade down to, if I'm not mistaken, 60 targets and KPIs, which have then been cascaded down to different functions and they actually track that and report that periodically. So, because if you don't measure, and if you don't know what the impact is, then you can't manage whatever it is that you set out to do. So, just like any management discipline, performance management is extremely important in putting together the, the whole responsible management practice. Uh, I won't go into this in detail, but I'm sure you all know the examples. And for me, I, I feel these are the benchmarks you know, that, that companies can look at. You I mentioned that. Nestle doing a lot of good work in the creating shared value space, looking at how to integrate their work with uh, you know the clusters around them, the, the farmers, the farming community, the logistics, and how they actually bring along community in growing their business as well. Right? Eco imagination. I mentioned that earlier. I think as of a few years ago, they were saying that they had generated something like uh, 18 or 19 billion USD from this product line imagination and in five years time before five years time we were expecting the rate of growth of revenue for this product line to actually double their usual traditional product so there is a business opportunity there is a business potential that goes beyond just being the nice guy right uh, last but not least I think Digi and the because that's something that's very close to me and that's something that I was involved in for many years uh, and the deep green program is about reducing our carbon footprint and about uh, working with stakeholders to actually reduce shared carbon impact. 
Uh, and this is kind of the journey we took. You know, this is an example of, I think, how we evolved as well at Digi. And I don't think a company needs to sort of do everything overnight, but I think they can be, can be in stages. And if you look at the DJ experience, what they did was they started off with a very strong community focus, and that was in 05 to 07. They had a very big community program called Digi's Amazing Malaysians. Uh, and then in 06, when we seriously started looking at integration, uh, that's when we said it needs to start within. So we kind of um, started internally engaging our employees, educating them, getting them to understand uh, what was happening. Uh, I did a lot of internal lobbying to get people to understand why I was talking about issues which they didn't think was something a CR person would be interested in. Uh, and then, you know, we went on to, uh, to climate change, which is a little bit more strategic, and then embedded it into our business, disclosed, did the whole reporting, uh, and, and, and that's where we are right now. I think that's my last slide, almost. So, I mean, that's my last slide. We go to the next. My contact details are there. Uh, if you have any questions, do just drop me an email. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Meyer.